click the link in the description to download your own copy of this video's problem. Hey guys, Russ here. Welcome back to another fantastic chemistry video. And today we're going to talk about drawing chair conformations of cyclohexanes. Guaranteed, this will be on at least one of your exams. Probably two, maybe the final. Okay, pretty much guaranteed. All faculty everywhere I've ever been ask questions about chair cyclohexane. They probably spent an exorbitant amount of time on this in class, so you can pretty much take it to the bank. It's going to be on your exam. So let's learn how to do it and do it correctly. First things first, drawing a chair cyclohexane is not as hard as you think. You have to practice it, though. So draw like a sideways V, just kind of like that, with the left side being a little bit longer than the right side. Left side's a little bit longer than the right side. Just a little bit, okay? Just draw a V kind of like that, okay? Practice it. It's not hard. Now draw two parallel lines to the right, like so. And make the top line just a touch shorter than the bottom line. So these two lines are running parallel like this. The top line is a little bit shorter than the bottom one. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. And now, with an upside down V, connect this side with that side. And that's how you do it. That's how you make a chair cycle hexane. It's very simple. It's very simple. Let's do that again. Make a V. The left side of the V is a little longer than the right side. Draw two parallel lines. The bottom one should be slightly longer than the top one. And then connect them with an upside down V. Like that. There you go. There you go. There you have it. Two chair cyclohexanes. Okay. Now, let's draw in our accompanying hydrogens and methyl group there's a methyl group right here. Well, I'm going to draw my methyl group straight up in the axial up position for no other reason than I want it to. And that's the only reason it's there. I could have drawn it down equatorial. It's fine. Now, the rule is this. On the same carbon, if one group is up axial, the other group that's on the same carbon is down equatorial. So this is up axial, this is down equatorial. Up axial, down equatorial. Down equatorial, up axial. It works the same way every time. Every carbon in a chair cyclohexane does that. If one group is up axial, the other group is down equatorial. If one group is down axial, the other one's up equatorial. That's how it works. Okay, so let's go to the next carbon. Let's go here. Now here, we have one group that's up axial. So here on this carbon, the axial has to be down. It's always going to alternate. Here it's up axial. Here it has to be down axial. So there we go. And here we go. Okay, so I'm drawing the equatorial ones in black, the axial ones in purple. So here the axial is down. So here the axial has to be up. On the next carbon, axial up, axial down, axial up. Therefore, this should be axial down. Axial down, so therefore, axial up. This is axial up, so this one should be axial down. Now watch how I do this one. Notice how I broke the bond here on the back one. It's to give the illusion that this back one is behind this blue line. So I'm trying to sit, I'm trying to tell the user or the reader that this purple bond back here is behind this blue one. That's why I broke it. Notice how this one I drew it through the bond. So this front one, the purple went through the blue one on the back to give the illusion that this one is in front. That's what I'm trying to show here. So let's continue drawing in our equatorial. So here we had equatorial down, equatorial up. So this one has to be equatorial and down. This one has to be equatorial and up. This one's equatorial and down. This one's equatorial and up. Notice, 
if I have one group going up, axial, the other group is equatorial down, equatorial up, axial down, axial up, equatorial down. It always does that. Always, always, always. In your chair molecule, you should have three axial up, three axial down, three equatorial up, three equatorial down. Always, always works that way in a chair. Other confirmations are different, but in chair, it's always that way. Okay. All right, let's draw the flip chair. We're going to flip it. We're just going to take the chair and we're going to flip it. Well, now when you say a flip chair, what we mean is this part of the molecule is going to go up. This part of the molecule is going to go down. It's going to go flip. It's called a chair flip. Okay. Or a ring flip. So now you simply draw it the opposite way. Draw an upside down V where the front one's a little longer than the back one. Draw two parallel lines where the top one's a little longer than the front one, the bottom one, and then just join them. Okay? Now I tell people at this point, number your carbons. Number your carbons. One, two, three, four, five, and six. It's very helpful at this point if you number your carbons. Because now we're going to keep track of these carbons. And I'm going to say carbon one is right here. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So carbon one is here. Now, here's the deal. When you do a ring flip, when you flip a, when you flip a ring, whatever is axial up will become equatorial up in the ring flipped version. Whatever is equatorial down will be axial down in the ring flip version. So here on carbon number one, the methyl group is axial up in the ring flip, it'll be equatorial and up. And the hydrogen will be axial down. So here it's axial up. Oops, sorry. So here it's axial up. The methyl group is equatorial up. Here it's equatorial down. Here it's axial down. It's the opposite in the ring flip confirmation. And that's always how it works. Whatever is up in one confirmation is up in the next one, but it goes from axial to equatorial. The up-down doesn't change. The axial equatorial changes. Okay. Now, let's keep drawing in our uh, stuff. So what was once equatorial is now axial. What was, ex uh, what was axial is now equatorial, but the up-down does not change. So that's how you would draw them. That's how you draw all the hydrogens into a chair cyclohexane. Now, I recommend drawing the hydrogens in, especially at the beginning, because students often forget they're there. But once you become more advanced, if the question doesn't specifically say to include them, or your faculty member hasn't told you to include them, you can start to leave them out. Now, the question has a follow-up. For each molecule, circle the confirmation that has the lowest potential energy. So we only have one molecule here. It's this one. So we need to know the lowest potential energy. Well, the lowest potential energy puts the largest group in the equatorial position. The largest group has to be equatorial. And it's this one right here. Because that methyl group is in the equatorial position. Now, why is that? Because of something called the 1-3 diaxial interaction. The 1-3 diaxial interaction. Notice, this is carbon number 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. If I go in the other way, 1, 2, 3. So this hydrogen and this hydrogen are three carbons away from each other. And, that, and, and from the methyl group as well. So when the large group is in the axial position, the steric strain between this methyl or this group and these two groups is maximized. Steric strain is the strain that molecules undergo when they have groups that are held too close together. So they repel each other. They push against each other. So that means this methyl group now doesn't want to be axial. It wants to be equatorial because it minimizes the steric strain between this group and this group and the steric strain between these groups is known as 1-3 diaxial interaction. Okay, So to put the large group equatorial, 
you minimize that steric strain, the steric strain known as 1,3-diaxial interaction. All right, now guys, I hope you liked this video. If you did, slap that like button. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know the kind of questions that you're working on in your organic chemistry class. And if you could, please share my content with your family and friends. Let them know I exist so that maybe I can help them pass their organic chemistry course. And if you could, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It really does help me as your creator to, for you to subscribe. It lets YouTube know that my content is beneficial and that people are engaging with it and doing well with it. Now with that, I want to wish you all good luck and good chemistry. We'll see you soon. Email drbetts at protonmail.com if you would like a copy of every problem in this series.